weeks, like, like when some of them don't show up, like two or three weeks ago, I was ready. And then, and it was only me at the co-leader and I, oh yeah. No don't start fires inside kids. Don't start fires right. inside. Yep. It's bad. Don't teach your 12 year olds how to do it. Hello. I guess we should write the show now. Yeah. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run scc or nasa we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and build it yourself join us each week for tech discussion tips tricks news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing and whether it's on the spot hella sweet or we're lucky enough and chrissy gives us just the tip we're sure you're going to giggle a little and learn even less everyone report to the paddock this is chris this is chrissy I'm Jeff. <laughs> I was fixing 140, the video 140 shows, man. Right? And, and, like, and I'm this, mental. This is only like the even, fifth one on Zoom. So. <laughs> we don't even change the order. Like, I know. For years. <laughs> um, uh, who, who's going to tell us what show we're at? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, now now I'm, 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 I'm uh, uh, do we, we do it. Do we want to start over again? Because we can still do that. Because no. right yeah. now, we're, this is we don't, not going We don't well. edit. We don't edit. All right. This and is we authentic. Are, yeah. We're, we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to another OTD episode of our podcast. It's episode 140. All right. If you're not driving a car, don't forget that E1R bingo card. You can just start checking crap off right now. Like we lose. I hate it. We're all a mess. We're yeah. All, yeah, yeah. Hot mess. All right. General but, waking problems. As, as you guys are checking out that stuff in your bingo card, let's kick into the beginning of our show. What you working on, Chris? I've been getting a lot done lately. So you know I was working on this trailer project. Everyone, I think, has heard plenty about that. That's basically done now. So all the insulation is in it. One 10-volt system is installed. Battery is in it. Power converter is in it. 12 volt lights which look great by the way and light the whole thing up um lights on the back of it to you know for work lighting behind the trailer or for backing into dark spots it's all there it works i'm thrilled so it's, it's been a couple of weeks since we talked about this this is your enclosed yes. all aluminum high foot. top 20 foot race car trailer so yes. this thing basically made us jealous before you did the interior pretty much your you just, your you interior was nicer you had nicer walls <laughs> and like the lights switch had with more lights general wakeman problems right yeah mine so, was just I, made out of steel and extra heavy yeah so i just wanted my interior to be you know that same kind of niceness yours had and have more lights and but i said well if i have the walls off to do wiring well i might as well insulate so you know of course that's how i go and uh, down the rabbit hole i fall for a month <laughs> but it's it's while basically you're, that the, while you're in there yeah the only thing it's not working is when it's unplugged from shore power the dc stuff doesn't work which it should so it's something with the power controller from an rv that i've got it looks mental just like the one in your rv little brown control panel you push mm -hmm. the thing yep. and you got the fuses yep. on the one side and the breakers on the other it looks exactly like that it's the same thing so it should work i don't know why i gotta deal with that but not right now because now it's boat time and time's a Clock's a ticking for a boat. It's got to go in the water soon, so I got to do the boat. The only thing that trailer still needs, the the, the car trailer, is e track installed. It's coming to be here on Friday, and also a workbench in the front on half of the side. And I need to go to Fazio's Fabrication Disneyland and get some get some aluminum for to do that. So, Ooh, shiny aluminum. Uh, I, my suggestion was to just send the person that's closest to Disneyland to Disneyland for product. Well, we'll if you could, because the Reading Express is going to run this Friday. Why? Oh. Oh. So uh, I, I could get to that if you're done. I'll, I'll tell you why the Reading well, Express is running. Well, yeah, hold that thought. I'm going to... You know, back to the boat because that's the new project is our 1983 boston whaler 17 foot been in my family since 1991 a boat and i've had a lot of adventures together it has had a number of years though at the cape of field expedient repairs i'd be like we're up there for Memorial Day weekend <laughs> we got to get the boat ready in the water let's do it we get it good enough and clean it up and make it it still looked nice um but there was a number of things i knew were not done well 
So we said, well, let's bring it home and try to work on those. So we did. So, um, and that again, fell down another rabbit hole. It's gone into a complete restoration of this boat. So it is completely stripped to a bear hull right now. There's not a single thing on it. I've then drilled out all the holes that had stuff screwed into it and counter. Generally, them. you don't want holes in your boat. Well, you, you have to. You'd be amazed at how many holes are in a boat, because it's uh, <laughs> really it's full of stuff. You screw stuff down, like you got to screw the console down, and the, the cleats, and the, the and lights, the and cleats, the... exactly, and the seat, and the gas tank, and the blah 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 plus whatever else other people have done over the years that you have to fix. So I've been trying to you get all those holes ready to fill back up and then we'll redrill them properly because a lot of them were just loose. And, and lots of sanding. We started sanding. And like little cracks in the gel coat, you got to get in there with a Dremel and kind of dig out the crack so that when you put the filler on it, you like the epoxy two-part fairing compound, it's got somewhere to go because it doesn't really just go into a little tiny crack. You have to give it a little valley. So. I, I, I do, before this goes into the negative, and we know this is going into the negative, you said you've had a lot of great adventures with that boat. What was the, I'm going to say, highlight adventure, or at least the highlight adventure that all four of us would know about? Well, you're going to the fact that Chrissy and I drove it from, the, from our house to the place, the yacht club where we had the wedding two, a couple of years ago. It, exactly. So. This beautiful yeah. arrival on a wonderful day. That was, that was just great. I thought the yeah. people were the beautiful part. Some of them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. I was going to, I thought you were going to say uh, when you learned how to, well, you didn't learn to drive on that boat, did you? You were learned yeah. on the 13 foot. I thought there was going to be right. something like, well, me and Skippy were had a share in a six pack. <laughs> yeah. And he yeah, said, hey, Skippy. do you know where that sheep field is? <laughs> in the boat, oh. huh? Okay. Uh, wow. Well, hey, you know what, Jeff? You're so excited to tell your story of sheep and of the Reading Express. <laughs> well, uh, I, I will say that the Reading Express is going to run this weekend on Friday because uh, the lovely and talented Jennifer, who is my wife, in case you all missed that, um, is dealing with an incredibly antiquated system for restaurant managers called serve safe so any, anyone ever work in a restaurant raise your hand if you've had ever been serve safe certified so yeah you I gotta learn certified, but i work oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. 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 i got yeah. certified because my mom got certified okay yeah so you have to have someone in the restaurant who's certified um and this company out of chicago uh, uh controls the certification and they control it like the sat to where there is no like online version and you have to like like pop open the seal of the envelope and take the test and send it to them. Well, during COVID time, uh, you still need to be certified. So Jen has to drive to Pennsylvania before her certification runs out where a bunch of her friends and pencil and, and uh, uh, instructors, cause she's an instructor in the course, she teaches it to students. So she has to retake the test at in front of an approved instructor. So I, I think they're going to sit down and then like, she's going to take the test and then she has to recertify the other instructor. So they're going to switch seats and then take the test for the other person. I don't know. It's weird. Right? This, that sounds amazingly like the air force when you, we lose funding to fly. And so they focus on just the evaluator and then like one evaluator has to evaluate the other evaluator so that they get like a pyramid so they can train everybody else. Yeah. It's actually not that bad. I think four or five of them are all going to get certified and one of them still is. So he'll stand at the front of the thing. But anyway, that's not what I've been working on. That's just where the wedding express is running. <laughs> um, anyway, I came here to, I came here to tell you about the draft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kill he said kill no um so so uh y'all know that i have to mow the lawn like every other week and it's a lot of place and i, I go about one and a half lawn mows between every break breaking of the lawn mower so i broke the lawn mower with half of the lawn done and half undone so it was like a new level of redneckery that was going on in my house because it was like how many mowers do you have now that work or mowers that are like total at my house. Total mowers. Three. <laughs> One riding, two pushing. The two pushing have never worked in my care. The riding mower blew the belt. So I had to like 
put on my mask and go to the Home Depot and like stand in line and get that, whatever. I took care of that. So, but I took the day off. This is how excited I was. I had to take the day off to go to the Home Depot and get all that done. Uh, but like the last thing you want to do when you have like a broken race car and a half done home project is spend like five hours wrenching on the lawnmower. So I, I put that first because it was the most annoying thing that I've been working on. Um, I will get to the home project. You all know I'm working on the flooring in our master bedroom. So uh, I pulled up all kinds of subfloor and it was very exciting. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Termite damage. Yay. Ooh. So it was obviously old termite damage. It was two floor joists. The floor joists on the other sides were fine. There's no, no sign of anything. So, you know, it's like you open the floor and you go, oh, crap, this is going to take a lot longer than I expected. So I spent uh -huh. a whole day doing that. <clears throat> But that's all done. I replaced about half of the subfloor. It's a uh, 13 by 15 room, so it's not even that big. And I've done, I did like three and a half sheets of subfloor. I've got all like the, the little padding in, um, the click lock. I am so impressed with the uh, Cali bamboo click lock flooring. That stuff is absolutely fantastic. It is so precise. I. Uh, I will say everyone should go ahead and get that, but I am going to now go to the tool review part of my, what you're working on. And I am going to come. I love tool review. It's my favorite. Oh, well, Chris has his hand up though. That the, the non click lock, the solid, solid tongue and groove Cali bamboo also really excellent. It's holding up beautifully. Yeah. It's a great product. It is way better than the click lock that I was using for other brands. So I bought a jigsaw because who knows where the hell my jigsaw is. It's like old, it's got a cord. Yes, mental. But jigsaw or Harbor Freight? Neither. So, uh, you know, I'll know I'm in the Milwaukee battery system because you've watched me wrench on all of my cars. So I went out and I got the M12 Milwaukee jigsaw because I said, I'm, I'm going to use this tool a decent amount. I do a lot of wood. And that is the worst piece of crap I've ever had in my life. I returned it after 12 hours. Wow. And you returned nothing. What? It was a 12 volt, though, not an 18. Like sure. It's, so it's a separate system, separate charger. Oh, no, I, but I have that stuff. one. That's, that uses, the, I have 12s for some oh. other things, like my uh, ratchet, my ratcheting okay. wrench is 12. So, um, yeah, so I bought the M12, and you would, you would go about four inches, and the foot, that's like the little table, mm -hmm. would immediately be loose. And you tighten it back up and four inches and it would immediately be loose. So I went on the internet and about half the people who own it say, this is the greatest tool ever. And the other half says, yeah, the little foot comes loose every time I, 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 I saw for six inches. So I returned the sucker. Okay. You get That's it. One? End of tool review. I didn't, you know why? Cause I was already done that part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> so until the next room, I'll order a new so one. So when you need there another, you when you need something else, you'll just try to find out where yours is, yes, which yes. is probably somewhere in the depths of your garage. Well, well, no, I, basically I'll decide if I'm going to buy the Ryobi or if I'm going to get the M18, which is twice as much money. Totally. Oh. That's okay. it. Chrissy, what are you working on? I have been helping with the boat. Uh, we had a lot of long, tired, uh, like yard work day. Um, we did, so my parent, we borrowed an edger for my parents and it's never been done. So it took me about three hours and I didn't finish it, uh, but we have a really long sidewalk. So all the way down. Um, and, and then I had mowed the lawn also. So I was uh, cranky and sad on Sunday. Monday? I don't know. It was a Monday this week. Uh, and I had, we had a few parties with some people over and I got no naps, but I was promised some naps and I didn't get any naps. So <laughs> maybe this weekend. So just That's stuff. Great. Working on the boat today. Now, now Mental, we're going to toss it to you next. And yes. I know you are officially our guest wrangler and I know you're going to introduce our guest, but our guest has been so quiet. We haven't even had a snicker out of him yet. He must not like our jokes. No, I'm muted. <laughs> I, was, I was actually going to introduce him as sitting quietly and then wondering what the hell he's gotten himself into yeah seriously uh, at this point my, conne <laughs> my connection is not so <laughs> yeah uh, Gentle, other can, than can booking, you hear me <laughs> other yeah. than booking really quiet guests <laughs> what have you been doing this weekend 
I've had so many sprinkler repairs. So I'm, 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 I'm coming to the belief that either my entire sprinkler system is falling apart or that every time I repair one of the little pinholes, that it sends more pressure farther down the line to another pinhole that becomes much bigger than a pinhole. I have dug up my front yard at least four times finding these bizarre leaks of my sprinkler system. And I don't even have a lawn. This is only yeah, I was going like to say, flowers. what are you watering? Like you got, have yeah. sand and rock. I've got oleanders and then I've got uh, the, I don't know the, what that is. The, yeah. The, they're it's very poisonous, but they, they're, they're very they hard. Don't need, the they desert. can't need much water. They live in the desert. Right, but I, I, I still want them to be nice. And then I've got some flowers out front and, and, and some hummingbird stuff in the back. But yeah, so that I've been fighting so much of that. But I did finish the hot tub surround. So the hot tub has been completely redone. It actually has stairs and lights. And uh, there's wider parts on two of the sides so you can set your drinks now. There's a place to have the... That's bad. important. So, if you, the lack of cup holders there before was a problem. It, it was definitely a problem. Yeah, so that problem has now been successfully addressed. Um, we it, actually... It wasn't so much the lack of cup holders on your hot tub. It was the fact that there were cup holders in the wrong locations and the wrong in, size. In the, in the pool. Like it was like, it was like you molded to like, into the fiberglass, yeah. but then it was like you put a cup in it. And they're angled. And they're, it, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. like this is... It like spills it, it right in. Asking for... Yeah, it was adding yeah. If the yeah. cup holders were in the pool, they're in the right spot. <laughs> they, but if they work, so now they're just over the edge. I've, I've, I've built extended sides so you can set your drinks on the two sides. Uh, Moko, the little chihuahua, the rat dog, loves it because now he can get up on the top stair and check on me without having to worry about being in the water. And he, you know, If he sees me move too quick, he's like, oh, he's going to put me in the water. And he runs back down the stairs, but he gets up there and does that. Uh, we also had visitors over Sunday, a, a good friend of mine, uh, she is immunocompromised and her, her seven-year-old son and uh, my uh, another retired military buddy of mine and his older son, they've been trapped in the same house since this all started and they were ready for a little bit of interaction and Vicky's been very adamant about keeping our house clean. So she, we had them over and they finally got to have grown-up conversation and her seven-year-old got to play in the pool and would not get out, was literally sitting in the shallow end at seven o'clock at night as the sun was going down and he was shivering. And they're like, do you want to get out of the pool? <laughs> no, no, I don't want to get out at all. This is fun. But I, I had the hot tub. So he would run to the hot tub until he warmed back up and then jump back in. And I, I bought a bicycle. I've been shopping for a bicycle on the Facebook marketplace, trying to augment some of my um, cardiovascular work. So I bought a just cheap as hell spray painted bombed bicycle but uh it's exactly what i need and last night i got to do the commentating on the i lemons tuesday night trash races and i was doing that with eric rude chris ray uh ryan bauer aka uh, bearded sim racer who does the entire production for the thing and sean yoder and that was hysterical those guys are truly, truly funny. Judge Bill stopped by and gave us an entire history lesson on the Dodge Dynasty and the difference between that and the electronic digital dash K car based New Yorker. Uh, and also how he was, he met and hung out with the director of Repo Man, who is the professor at film at Colorado, University of Colorado, in much Phil like fashion. And uh, looking Truth. forward, I listened to it. <laughs> looking forward to doing that tomorrow. And I, Jeff, I believe you're going to join us. Chris, are you going to make it? I, I don't know. I think he has other people. I think he's got one of us on. I think he's got me coming on Sunday. Sunday. I, yeah. I'm. I've been lobbying hard. I want us. I want it just just to be us on Sunday. I'm hoping that we'll be able to get away with that. We may not, but yeah, that's 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 just good fun watching that stuff. Uh, so that yeah. was we had a good time with that one. I absolutely enjoyed watching it, and it was it, you, mentally nice job there. That was good. <laughs> and, Did a great uh, job. Yeah, no, I, I haven't had any confirmation for Thursday, so whatever. If they can't have too many people. It becomes a big yeah. mess. Everybody. Then it just becomes a you know uh, after the catch with Mike Rowe, uh, with racing going on in the background. Yeah. So as I've mentioned, sitting patiently is our guest this evening, Trevor Andrusco. Um, you had your resume out here, and this is after you corrected what I had written on there. If we talked about everything you've done in motorsports, this would be the rest of the show. But you've you've been doing everything for a very long time. So, but uh, I I don't want to attach you to anything. But Trevor and Drusco, please. Uh, you guys on? keep going. I'm I'm working on my bingo. <laughs> 
on my bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> so Trevor, what have you been working on? Chris, talking about the boat, does that count about reminiscing no. about the past vehicle? Yes. No, it's a current <laughs> oh, vehicle. No. But we talked about the old boat. Did talk boat about the boat. Did talk uh, about the old boat. boat. Yeah, race. damn it. You get it. Ooh, I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> You um, could be the first guest to ever get bingo during the show. While on the show, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, so, I don't know. What, what do you want? The long story? The short story? Well, just how much time us, you got? Tell us, tell us what you're working on, and then we'll get to your resume after we get through the news and notes. Well, working on, uh, so I'm in Georgia, and Georgia was one of the last states to close and one of the first to reopen. So, really, uh, only spent three or four weeks at home. Um, Work came back and it came back quickly. So over the last few weeks, I've actually been working with one of my sponsors, SimCraft, uh, building pedals for Ooh, simulators. Uh, so it's a hot market right now. Um, us in the hot states are like dying for, uh, for equipment. And, and if you're waiting on a pedal set or a simulator, uh, talk to Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I got mine. So. Not my department. Um, I, I've literally been building simulator pedals for about four weeks straight. Um, oh, wow. Okay. And we are just now getting caught up on to the point that when I go in tomorrow, we're going to be at zero. Uh, oh, excellent. Yeah. So it's, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. Uh, during the shutdown, uh, spent a lot of time on iRacing and uh, actually drove a real car. I'm not going to mention where. Um, but we did get on track. So things have been coming back slowly this week. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of gone back to normal for me. So I don't really have much for you guys. I'm somebody's, somebody's trying to go gra grow grass in their front yard. I'm doing the same. So, uh, <laughs> feel free to reach out with any tips. No, um, I try and kill all the grass in my front yard. <laughs> I hate mowing. I'll send you oh. some. No. <laughs> and I'm trying no. to keep mine alive. If if Jeff yeah. could find a way to stunt its growth, but yet have it green, he would. Like, Jeff, would, it green, Jeff would pave his entire yard and then like roll green into like square shapes to look like a lawn if he could. Sounds perfect. You don't have I, to cut it. I would move to California if they could like convince me like, doesn't California like pay you to get rid of your grass <laughs> and put in the fake stuff? I would do that in a heartbeat if New Jersey ever started. Although Mental's having all these problems with his rocks. So like <laughs> that's what you would end up with and you're Wait, gonna have problematic we're rocks. We're talking about New Jersey. Does New Jersey suck? Yes. Bingo. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, and he walked you into that one. That's <laughs> no, actually right. I, I was cool. I'm sorry. Where are we going to? I think I think we're ready for I think we're ready for news and notes. Okay, let's do news and notes. Let's get this sucker started. <laughs> We've been crazy tonight, but now it's news and notes. Early okay, hates us so you much. You all know <laughs> that we are big fans of Ross Bentley. And if you're still actively listening to any of those podcasts you, loose, you used to listen to on your way to work, uh, you probably got a surprise this week and found that a new episode may have appeared. Um, but you should, if you have stopped uh, subscribing, then make sure you check wherever you get your podcast. Find this new episode. Uh, the link will also be in our show notes. Ross talks to uh, Colin Braun about conscious and subconscious driving. It's a good episode. Like Harbor Freight Jack stands, foot fungus and other things you don't want to see again, counterfeit safety gear is showing back up in inspections. Uh, Matt Koch at Speed Cafe, which is an Australian enthusiast site, pointed out that some drivers are returning to the track with dangerous and useless equipment. The link is in our show notes, but just understand this very basic rule. Buy your safety gear from a reputable supplier. Winding Road, uh, 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 Safe Racer, uh, um, Trevor, why am I not thinking of the one Discovery Parts? Um, it, it, it just you, who's the one? What's the one in New Jersey? I mean, Jags, Sable and, Energies, Racer yeah. Parts Wholesale. Thank you, yeah. thank you, all you, of them. Summit, Summit and Jags. Jags. Yeah, right. they, they carry Jags. a lot of Absolutely. stuff. Speed Speedway. You know. Yeah, if if you're buying it off Amazon Pegasus. for one fourth of the Pegasus is an excellent supplier. If you're buying it on Amazon for one fourth of the price, no, just, Yo, just you should no. see the safety belts yeah. that I bought at Wish the other day. 
<laughs> you know what? I'm never going to see them because they're coming from Wish. <laughs> they're years never to get show. here. Never. By the time they get here, they'll be out of date. So, <laughs> they might be out of date. <laughs> That's funny. I, I ordered a bunch of stuff from Wish, including, which is kind of cool because it's for the trailer and I should mention it, like reflective tape. You know, like highly reflective Did stuff. Did you get it yet? So, but I ordered it so long ago, I totally forgot about it. And so it's like, like Wish is like buying yourself a Christmas present. You like order it and you forget about it. And you're like, Ooh. I did a <laughs> lot of that on Amazon at the beginning of this. Right? Uh, yeah. That was a thing. Uh, oh, well. drunk me is guys. Very don't nice. don't <laughs> yeah don't don't drink in Amazon. Yeah. No, no. You know what? I've bought the same thing multiple times on eBay. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. the only problem if you win all of them yeah did, cheap you need, did you need it again no it's watch only a problem if it shows up a second time and you get excited again it's true <laughs> <laughs> look i racing we already mentioned i racing never mentioned it mental mentioned it we all mentioned it uh it, we, we have another racer who was a professional racer who was suspended for iRacing. racing. And it, it's it, like, this is the meme. This, this is the, your lemons uh, theme right now. When we return to real life track, just be like all the people who were suspended for iRacing. racing. Uh, this time it does not include being a little whiny baby or racial epithets. It's old school. Audi factory driver Daniel Apt. Does anybody know this guy? He's a he's a, a e, Formula E. He was suspended, which is German for fired, uh, because he paid a professional esports racer. I'm not going to say this right. Lorenz Herzing to take his place. And so he was racing in a Formula E race and they noticed that he was doing really good and somebody checked the IP address and it turns out it wasn't even in the city that this guy lived. It was in the same exact IP address of a very famous uh, esports professional. Yeah, that's terrible. Don't Can do I that. just say what a stupid way to lose a ride? Yes. <laughs> Yes. I don't know if this he could have come in he could have come in dead last and no one would care. <laughs> yeah. Now and, and Trevor, you meant you're in the iRacing professional world and like, you know, it's part of your business and you know, things like that. But I, we have struggled and I have struggled because I am having trouble transferring my skills from real racing to iRacing. It's not equal. People who are great at iRacing would die in a car, and people who could drive a car really well are not great iRacers. So you don't have to, like, think that your wee-wee is small because your skills don't transfer. So you think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go out and say this. I, uh, I've been for a couple of years on a G27 and TV, not a real setup. It's the yeah, cheapest. Yeah, I, I don't have cheap. a real setup, cheap setup. So I last week raced in the USAC karting season finale uh, in the Apex 6, which is SimCraft's basically premier product. Six motion, six axis, ridiculous price. Um, We're going to pimp your social media later. But no, I no, no. I, I got out of it and I was tired. Oh. Yeah, but that, that, that setup is that. legit. That setup you is awesome. You don't get that in the basic setups that you have these days so i get it it's a pro guy he he obviously didn't take it seriously but at the same time buy the proper equipment if you're going to do it oh mm -hmm. totally no no I, and i don't want to say that they're not they're not complimentary <laughs> because th the skills can be transferred but there are plenty of people who have million dollar rides who never touch a sim because they can be in a real car at all times. Right. And, 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 and so those people sometimes have trouble and no one is going to blame you if you're terrible at iRacing. Chris, go ahead. Or you can be like with that NASCAR guy that Dave always talks about that does it in a, a folding metal chair with like a <laughs> PlayStation wheel on a 19 inch monitor and beats everybody. I think it's about the mentality as well. <clears throat> there was a, an opinion piece today by a, a He's a known automotive rider, and he used to be a midget car racer. And he's like, this is, this is stupid. People need to stop losing their jobs over iRacing. And my thing is, if you're going to operate at that top level, it is 
Skill is absolutely part of it, but it's only part of it. You're in show business and you better show up. You better show. Yeah, up. no, totally. The guy that's racing in the metal chair with a with a ten inch monitor, he's having fun with it. His sponsors love it. That's what it all comes about. You got to think like Bill Elliott in the late '80s when you get out of that car and the first seventeen words out of your mouth are all your sponsors and you're thanking them. And if if you can't play the game at that level, then there are any number of extremely talented drivers who are willing to step in and take your place. He could have come in dead last in this I race, said all kinds of wonderful things about Audi and how much fun he's having. And it would have all played out just fine, but he, he, he doesn't want to do what he, what he's contractually obligated to do, which is make your sponsor look good. I'm yeah. guessing he was probably one of those people as well that didn't actually practice. He just, thought he was going to be quick without absolutely and, and sure. the, you know no one has lost their ride because they're terrible at i at virtual racing no nope. people have lost their ride for mouthing off being a whiny baby not being good to their sponsor i mean what was it over denny hamlin racism over racism i was trying to skip that one <laughs> uh, you know rage, denny, rage quitting rage quitting <laughs> like like nobody said oh denny hamlin you're terrible because your daughter turned off the i racing no Right? They all laugh. He, but he Love but <laughs> but he knew what to do. He didn't yell and scream at his daughter. He put it on his Instagram and he laughed about it. Yep. Is that the and guy in the in the tiger costume? No, different that was guy. that was a different guy. Yeah. Different He's guy. the one that has a picture of his face as his face mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Which again, clearly Denny Hamlin gets it. You're in show business, all right? Your massive talent and the ability to drive a car, that's awesome. But I could name eight drivers right now who have professional level talent, three of which have been guests on this show and just the, the sponsorship just doesn't play out in their way. And they would happily, happily take these rides. And, if, and by the way, any major sponsors, if you're listening, you don't even have to put them in a real car. Put them in an iRacing car right now, and they'll still get out and say everything having to do with your company and what a wonderful job you're doing. I but, think that's changing the landscape of it a little bit, too, to be honest, is mm -hmm. I think more people are thinking like that now. I hope. Huh. I hope. Well, you don't anyway. make money in racing by, by winning. You make money in racing by having sponsors. Sponsors by make money showing by up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're, if you're in a major series, just by making your car on the grid, just by getting on the grid, you've done most of your job. Sure. Now, Jeff's not going to read this part because it's embarrassing. But on a, completely, yeah. on a completely unrelated note, Jeff is now interviewing talented iRacers with a high rating. <laughs> They're willing to work for Wawa Soup to go. Santiago <laughs> and I are already working <laughs> You know, Soggy won a race or was winning no, a race. No, Soggy oh. did not win a race. We're going to talk was, about that in a minute. <laughs> Let's talk about real races for a minute. Holy crap. Somebody talk about a real race. So are we racing coming up soon? Yes, we are. It, maybe. Oh, maybe. Holy Some crap. people are racing and maybe we Somebody will race Somebody is. Too. So it's a good start. Uh, all right. So Lucky Dog is throwing off the Corona Blues and racing at Pacific Raceways. They're 80 cars. They're sold out. They had their driver's meetings, the two of them already, online in advance. Brilliant. Everyone's at home. Get, get it written down. Because I can't imagine doing it at the track because the, tr wi the track Wi-Fi struggles, like trying to check your email <laughs> with everybody there, no. let alone everyone on a Zoom meeting with video trying to do that. So I think that's a great way to do it ahead of time. And you can keep track. You get people there. I think it makes great sense. Um, so, hey, good for, good for them. And then that one guy who yeah, always thanks. has the obvious question that everyone else in the crowd just goes, oh, ah. you can like mute. You can mute him. when he's <laughs> yeah. Well, that way everyone knows that guy's name. <laughs> too. Unless it's... So. I love puppies or whatever we put, <laughs> put at the bottom of all well, of our names. Well, then you can start calling I love puppies, oh, yeah. which, uh, you know, true. which, yeah, it's a shame. We got to do that. Um, also, it looks like AER is going to, uh, to drive over the drug bridge at Nelson's Ledges <laughs> and June 6th and 7th. So the, all, all, their, you know, all their juggalos will be there, apparently 24 cars. Guaranteed, not a single Jugga Lambo or Jugga Lexus in them, but uh, they'll be at uh, Nelson. <laughs> Nothing but BMWs. Way. Yeah, now, I, w I wonder what their what their max is, because I can't imagine. No, I can't imagine that. 
coming off of this and finding only 24 people. Well, nobody wants to, to there's a lot of people that still don't want to go out. Hang yeah. on, let me register 25. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trevor, can you also... get to Nelson's? How long would that be for you? 87 hour tow? Yes. Oh, it's 10 hours, I think. Because oh, I got to go to bad. Maryland to pick up the car first. Uh, yeah, oh, that's, that's, a, de- yeah. that's a detour. That's a bit of a not detour. Not quite on the way. But uh, uh, I, I, I'm with Chrissy. I think a lot of people are also, they're just, they're just dragging their feet to see if it's actually going to happen. That's kind of the same boat that we're in at the moment. I was waiting to see where the car count ended up. I won't, I won't hide that. No, nice. Yeah. So are you, are you going to take one of the Miatas or your uh, GT3? GT3. Oh, of Although course. this nice. just doesn't <laughs> feel like it's worth it. This, the Nelson's all just races a Saturday HPD and qualifying and the Sunday nine hour, nine hour race. The problem is that we're, we're in it for this season for the points. Uh, bad season to do it, but we're going to commit to it. Oh, yeah, and you guys have done quite well with uh, AER. You guys have finished strong in the points. Uh, we're Kingman trying to. Racing, by the way, follow, follow them on any of your social stuff. Or right. don't. Okay. Or, yeah, or don't. Yeah. <laughs> or don't, yeah. And we're, but so we're follow them if you want to, yeah, follow them if you want to end up on the podium on the track. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> so, so uh, we are T minus how many weeks till our potential first race? Two and a half, right? One. You're less than. Oh, we're not going to our <laughs> no, no, we're not going to. We're not going oh, to you, Okay, I got you. first potential race. Yeah, it's gonna be NJMP for Lemons, which is the 13th and 14th. And so, yeah, you know, as of when the show comes out on a Thursday, we'll be packing two weeks from then. Um, so I mean, the car's ready. Basically, you just got to get the fire bottle recharged, and we're set. So okay. Yeah, I know. All right, we'll see how it goes. We're supposed to hear something tomorrow, and they say whether or not it's gonna what they think and this will be lemon's first return back so uh yeah. aer is officially back lucky dog is officially back Champ- wrl and champer both have Are- events scheduled um at next month but but uh champ has not yet had an event no uh since, well since they- march Yes, they, they had they, some they before. Had yeah. They had they had their opening of the season, but then had to close the season. I'm actually I'm scheduled to run that. I'm scheduled to run Willow. Uh, if if the Air Force will let me go, I've asked the official channels. That's always a fun memo to type up. See, yeah. this guy's got a 76. Uh, hey, do you work for the Air Force? <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a 76 Oldsmobile Amiga. We've been trying to race this thing now for three months. And uh, Omega, Omega, spring. Omega. Not, you said um, an, an Amiga is an obscure 80s computer of which I had some <laughs> right. as a kid. It's a great computer. Yeah. Difference. yeah. I know. Corey, did you guys, Corey will did, curse me later. Did Did the Solstice stop by your place or not? No, it is due here Saturday. The Solstice will be due Saturday for a window net welding session with okay. Pantless Matt. Great. Fantastic. So, and nice. on that note, listener feedback on our YouTubes, which uh, a lot of these shows are ended up on YouTubes, and we've got almost three or four people that'll occasionally watch something. Uh, James Mulhern mentioned Fab Tip from our episode last week. Don't be afraid to scrap your part if it came out bad. Sometimes it's worth it to start over, which is solid advice because. I know I am the king of I will stick with a bad idea until the bloody, bloody end. Nice. Uh, That actually is a good tip that we didn't mention. Sometimes it's just better to go, I'm going to set this one aside and start again. Put that in the whoopsie pile. Yeah, exactly. You'll use, you'll reuse that metal later. Jeff likes talking about the sunk cost fallacy. So that's the same. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, Gregory S popped on our Facebook to say great shows. I took a break last year about episode 86 and I'm binge listening now while listening. I tend to shout out things randomly. I think my commentary is brilliant, but onlookers think I'm crazy. They are right. Inspired by many (laughs) advice with some really good information are some really bad decision including mentals bmw that was a horrible decision oh yeah. so i bad- forgot about that it was i forgot i forgot you even owned that decision right <laughs> uh bad choices make really good listening keep up the show good work and i'll see you at the races so those of you that are shouting at your computer while you're listening to us on the thing, uh, we will do another live show sooner or later where we're going to have listener feedback live uh, as soon as we figure out which one to do and Greg, hope your uh, alpha is actually coming together now. That'd be good. 
everyone I know everyone has missed having you guys around just yeah. mostly to listen to the car as it goes by we talked about that fantastic. Be yes before we were recording the lemon show last night we were talking about alphas and just how you get out of their way because they sound so good yeah so also on fab Michael K some great advice said based on your fab podcast which I'm listening to now uh, auto center punch is it, uh, excuse me an auto center punch is under five bucks at menards or harbor freight it'll last approximately three builds and with all the improvements in that time a uh, newly learned thing you can get 99 percent industrial quality bits for reasonable prices instead if you've ever never used an industrial only cutting bit i'm sorry um, norseman has a sub company called viking no individual bits, but indexes are sold. U.S. made in a 3 16th bit in mild steel with 300 RPM drilled at a single spiral of metal over a foot long as it passed through quarter-inch steel. Amazing difference. So we got a link to that in our show notes because Jeff loves tool reviews. Little Bear says, <laughs> buy Viking bits. Yeah, I actually looked at the set that he put on there, and I think I inherited a Viking bit set from my grandfather. Hmm. so and it's his like go-to hmm. bit and he was a diesel mechanic for over 50 years so yeah and he could he could sharpen bits like nobody's business oh it's better than that. i just keep buying a 13 dollar hybrid freight set and i'm just I break, saying or, break or dull enough i get another one <laughs> sunk cost fallacy <laughs> yeah coming totally. up uh so michael also says finally grinder drill press washers and 3a steel can make corvette c5 brakes fit a 95 pontiac transport now there is good listener advice for the general consumer things they need to know i said he said they outbreak 90 percent of the field they had to he said we had to use freaking osb to mock it up for the first time but damned if it didn't work and now we have almost 16 races on it and again outbreaks just about everybody in a freaking gm minivan from the dark days so well done. That's great. I was uh, walking, doing my COVID walk around the neighborhood today, and I saw an Oldsmobile silhouette Ooh. premiere. Oh, and so I was like, like oh, fans. man, that just needs a couple <laughs> more years. That thing would be awesome. A couple like more years up. in Jersey? It's not going to last long. No, I like it was to sit really up high, shape. see where I'm going. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, and Jen, amazing uh, it's lasted that long. That's what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> Especially in Jersey, it must be a southern car. Um, Jeff mentioned his new 944 crush. Don't get not me new. Don't <laughs> get me started. Well, it's new to all, new to reinvigorated, res resurrected, right? Yeah. Uh, which prompted young Chris Egan. Hold on, let me pause here for a bingo. <laughs> oh, man. Everybody's Sorry, getting bingo tonight. I know, I know, I know. It's close. Um, actually, I wouldn't have gotten it if you hadn't prompted the "Is New Jersey sucks," but that's okay. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, to say, Jeff, thank your guest. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, take it from someone who fell in love with uh, for a 944 trap years and years ago when I was 19 year old. Me said, "I could own a Porsche. Don't run, don't walk, run away. They can be pretty, but they're hell to work on, and you will want to set it on fire." Which is probably no surprise to how how often how you work on. Things are going now. Uh, you, you know what I did with mine? I sold the engine wheels for $100 to a lemons team. I gave the rest of the car to a local 19-year-old who bought a Project 944 and needed parts. He was too far in the hole to save him, so I gave him the parts car. That said, I have never installed 944 clutch kit, so it's just sitting in my garage next time. <laughs> next, uh, next to the timing belt tools. I make you a sweet deal. You know, and that's coming <laughs> from a guy who raced a Dodge Daytona, Daytona. for years that, and didn't that, give up on it. But, but yeah, he gave no up love. Like, on the 944. Well, l not only that, but isn't he like swapping a Wankel rotary into some sort of crappy hatchback BMW? No, he's putting a, uh, a Dodge 2.5 in a rear drive setup in an E36. Oh, great. Because that's had a the smart plan. Right. He had a big pile of them and he got a cheap E36. And, yeah. <laughs> it's a great way to put an E36 in class C is put a Chrysler turbo That's motor in it. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chrissy. Racer yeah. Rona reaction. So this is a little bit of a rerun because I didn't read all of Mental's um, uh, initial stuff, but hopefully you watch last night's hilarious lemons race. I race, excuse me. I race uh, rally cross with, some little cars that shouldn't have been Was rally that crossing. Spec Racer, Racer Ford. Ford. Yes. Uh, and I, oh, and some Jettas. Uh, and we mentioned, and we mentioned that Mental was one of the commentators. You did a great job. 
If you haven't watched one of these, you have to. Uh, the production by Bearded Sim Racer is awesome. He does such a great job of keeping track of everything that's on the track. Uh, he can back it up. We say, why does that guy in the wall? And he's like, hold on a second. And he, and he zooms the little car back and figures out what happened and who hit what. And uh, we broke eye racing last night with the, the Jetta that was in the ground and it kept freewheeling like it was hilarious and uh and they do a really good job commentary is great every time um so it's really a good thing to watch during these boring times of locking racing i have no idea if anybody else does it this well um you can watch it uh on uh twitch which twitch twi 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 um, twitch twitch right, right youtube or facebook twitch live app. um both of them are they have it all on there you can watch the commentary there's even um uh, subtitles if you don't want to listen to the commentary <laughs> subtitles uh, there is subtitles oh yeah my God. On, uh, i have to see what basically. subtitles does with uh with, with, with uh, judge phil it was actually the, <laughs> the, the, the subtitles were ahead well, of richard nixon's penis and <laughs> <laughs> they were ahead of the commentators yesterday on facebook live so uh, i stopped watching that and we just had it up on the tv but that's uh really good time uh mental your hand was up first yeah, so Bearded Sim Racer, uh, it, it's Ryan Bauer, but uh, he's tied in with that and Top Flight Computers. Follow them on the social media. Follow them on Facebook. They do a variety of things, not just the lemon stuff. And she's not kidding. His production values are just spot on. It's awesome. Uh, I have to. I was going to throw a correction towards the broadcast. Mental, you were right. Eric Rude was wrong. The original motor in the Spec Racer Ford absolutely was the 2.0 kent actually no I, I think you're thinking of the formula ford not the spec racer ford because the original spec racers were renault powered and then when those all started to dry out that's when they went with the uh because i was going down the same path you were and I, the 1.6 kent originally yeah because that was uh, yeah the yeah kent. they put that they put the, in the formula in, well the, the formula ford the spec racer ford he said well, that they didn't come out until they were using uh, first-gen Escort motors, 1.9. I was like, no, surfs were out way before that. Gen 2 was the Ford 1.9 fuel yeah. injected, according to Wikipedia. Yeah. Gen 3 is the Ford Sigma 1.6. What well, was Gen 1? It was the Kent, right? It doesn't right? say. Oh, that's all right. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to default to Eric on that one. I'm going to go with his correction. I I'm, I'm going to pull it out to I the do. listeners. Listeners, well, you, you can go. in the first gen spec racer Ford. I'm saying mental was right. And it was a Pinto Kent. Not Mark. the first generation. I, no, I, think I got first, it. Uh, Here it is. It's originally started as a, in 1984 Lima. as a sports Renault. Renault oh. bat out of the program in 89. So it became the spec racer Ford. Uh, also, because by 94, the, re the supply of rebuildable 1.7 liter Renault engines was drying up. SCC what? Is, French engines didn't last? Right. <laughs> the decision to replace the original Renault, Renault driveline with a 1.9 liter engine of five screen transmission max manufactured by Ford Motor Company. So uh, 10 horsepower up to 105. Yay. <laughs> well, there it is. Rude was right. I guess you were right, Mental. The Kent Lima must have been in the spec. That's, the, the, that's the formula Ford. The formula Ford. Yeah. Got it. Because Pegasus still has all these Kent Lima Kent parts in there. For the <laughs> anyway, I, I thought it was hilarious the way Alex Levinson's car broke the physics. It's like that right rear wheel didn't exist, but he owned it. He kept driving the entire race, basically on three wheels. Every time he turned right, the car oh, would just God. spin. So he and tried driving backwards he up, for a yeah, lap exactly. or two. Backwards. <laughs> that didn't work so well. So he'd go back to forwards. But by the end of it, he was like kind of getting the hang of it. And it was hilarious to watch. So well done, Alex, for owning it and, and playing with it for the rest of the race. That was great. It was. Uh, this week, the, it, the, the insanity continues. You donate, we drink effort. It's now over $2,700. The last designated delivery was Amanda Tully, who did it more of a Ray Charles style. But uh, there you go. <laughs> Anyone wishing to be a stunt liver for charity should contact Randy Bish. Facebook's apparently the best. Or get on one of our social medias and we'll put you in touch. You're probably going to drink that night anyway, so do some good. you know. Or, uh, yeah, hey, at least if you're going to give somebody money, make it count. Imagine yeah, you I had a good time with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> had, a terrible, had a terrible Friday morning, but I had a good time with it. And I believe they already announced that the uh, the – Stunt yes. liver this week is going to be, and I'm looking for it on the internet. Thomas, Pyrek, yeah. Pyrek. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Thomas. 
Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to, if you want to endanger Thomas's life, donate 10 bucks to your local uh, animal shelter or food bank, post it to his and Randy Bish's social media and you'll, he'll get a shot on you. Absolutely. And then watch the race. Cause it's funny. Yeah. So we also still doing our races. So Monday night, E1R races, uh, had a little bit of a, a slower group this week because of Memorial Day. I guess some people actually did things for the holiday to their car, house, boat, hot tub project or whatever. Uh, we did Laguna. Uh, Laguna is still hard. I have raced real life Laguna and I, and now I have done a decent amount of laps in, in I racing Laguna. And I'm still telling you, first time down the corkscrew in meat space is a, still a lot easier than the hundredth time down the corkscrew in I space. Unless he used the pro two lights. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> then, it's easy. then it's just a straight line. Mad yeah. it. Woo! Oh, by the way, this could just be because I'm terrible at I racing and I can't see around a corner. I think that might be some of it. It's probably it. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, with the VR, it's really not hard at all, Jeff. You just look over there. And then you look over there. <laughs> Did, don't, you, don't you constantly roll the Miata at Laguna? Uh, I did oh, once. Oh, no. no. I hate the Miata. <laughs> the ND is so bad. It's like it starts to step out just a little bit. I'm and hearing then, excuses. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't drive the ND anymore. I drive other stuff, and it's fine. I just don't like the setup on uh, that. Yeah. yeah, no, the setup is terrible. Either way, we had a good time. We didn't have a whole ton of people, and we screwed up the second race because we forgot to put in uh, quick repairs. So we all uh, had to drive very nicely in the second race, but it worked out great. <laughs> cool. All right. After that extended entire bit, and it's, uh, it's, it's not our fault because there's real racing coming. We are moving on to, Jeff, you want to bust out the speaker there? Oh, sure. Main topic. Guest Trevor right. Andrusco. Did I say that right? How's yeah. that for an intro? That's pretty close. All right. So as our guest tonight is Trevor Andrusco. He is principal at Track Nine. He is the vice president of operations at Kingpin Racing. Uh, Trevor and I met, God, years ago at Atlanta Motorsports Park. We've uh, we've loaded up into his forerunner, driven down to Florida. We've had a lot of really bad decisions that uh, ended up with the, the bunch of us in the same car in the same race. He is a fantastic human being and a great driver. And you've, you've done it all uh, just uh, right before all the, the Corona stuff kicked off. You were out here in Vegas doing off-road racing for, for the uh, Mint 400, which was awesome. You got me and Vicky behind the scenes. We got to go see the whole uh, cool stuff down on Fremont Street. That was great. But Trevor, uh, give us the, as much as you can, abbreviated but interesting version of your resume because it goes on for years. Speaking of Forerunner, piling into the Forerunner, I think that's the only time I've piled into my own car and woken up back at, ho back at home. Was, and after watching me drive that cart, that was a bold move on your part to trust. Yeah, him. seriously. <laughs> oh, I gave you the, the keys like in Florida, times, and we got but... back in Georgia, and I was at home. I don't remember much of that <laughs> drive back. Florida I was and Georgia asleep. are not that far apart. I mean, depending or, on how far Florida, to Florida. Florida. Orlando to long, Orlando to Atlanta is like eight hours, seven hours. Yeah, yeah. And this is after we'd been up for a a, a day and a half, really. A day. <laughs> um. All right. Short background. Uh. Honestly, a little bit of everything. So started with cars straight out of high school and started building uh, twin turbo Corvettes. That's kind of what got me into the industry, picked up a camera and became a photographer, found some clients and worked in Grand Am and ALMS. Wanted to get closer to the action, so started learning how to drive uh, and actually learning from the drivers that I was working with. They started teaching me how to drive and became a driver coach. Um, so you're seeing a progression here. I, I never like to stop where I'm at. Um, since the change over to driver, things have slowed down quite a bit, but more work, more volume. Uh, so now I'm a consultant, uh, pretty much full-time. Uh, Tyler Hoffman, who I believe you guys had on the show a couple weeks ago, is yep. my mm -hmm. first partner, and uh, he and I run a race team together because that was a smart idea. And, um, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of gone from there. So right now, I think we've got four or five rental cars that are available to 
people that want to go racing that will kind of bring them through the ropes and get them ready. Um, and it's interesting because you guys have a tiered program because you can start in a Miata. And yeah, you want to go dirt track racing? <laughs> <laughs> I do actually. I kind of, do, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> actually, <laughs> we so, buried the lead. We're just going to talk about the Mint 400. And all <laughs> and all believe, it, time, so. believe it or not, there is a waiting list for the dirt track Honda Civic front wheel drive at Dixie Speedway in Atlanta. Yeah, this is a, we're not talking the Mint 400, which he did, Jeff. We're talking there's a, there's a dirt track near his house that is oh. legend. I've got like 40 names on this list. And if we ever go racing again in Georgia, uh, I'm happy to bring anybody that wants to go racing. Um, the Mint 400. But school was... bus figure eight racing or, <laughs> or trailer. No. <laughs> uh, so Dixie Speedway hosts waterless boat races. So feel free to bring that boat of yours <laughs> and tow it behind. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That sounds amazing. It is fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I've done a little bit of everything uh, now driving. Uh, I am an FIA bronze, so if anybody out there is looking for a driver, let me know. Uh, Incidentally, and... he will not hire someone else to do his <laughs> ISM racing. Yeah, seriously. He will not use offensive terms. He will never rage quit, and he will absolutely kiss babies and thank any sponsor you need him to. I might rage quit one or tw once or twice. <laughs> as long as you don't do it like on Twitch or something. Live TV <laughs> on Fox Sports. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> yep. In the largest telecast uh, eSport event of all time. Uh, what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, now, Trevor, and this is what I, I find you have a unique perspective because you've sat behind a desk at a racetrack. So Quite a bit. Been, yeah, you've been in the car. You've been outside the car. You've overseen facilities. You've, you've, you've had to manage the track. You've had to do the calendar for all the races. You've had to be the race steward. And... So uh, I, we were talking, it would be a great idea. So our main topic is actually is how not to annoy the track people, or more importantly, how to endear yourself to people that are working the races that we all love to go at. How do you get them on your side? How do you- Sorry, I think I'm having connectivity issues. <laughs> <laughs> um. Because we've we've got some tricks we pull, Chris. You 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 know one of our great don't be, tricks. Don't be an idiot. I mean, <laughs> seriously, it, it comes down to put yourself in their shoes. Um, you know, I put out I put some notes on here. Th I think three of my notes are beyond time. If you're late for grid, <laughs> I'm not <Yep>. waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I I have purpose. Uh, now that I can say this, I have purposely started a race session early because I knew somebody was going to be late. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> That's excellent. I, clearly that person was a jerk. Don't piss off the race director. <laughs> well, how do you do that? Not what's, what's your hot button? What, what made you mad about that person? If I'm in the middle of a driver meeting at 9.30 in the morning because I've intentionally moved the driver meeting later so that you can show up on time, don't call me during the driver meeting letting me know, letting me know that you're late. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who just thinks that they could just do something like that? Yeah, what like level that? of motorsports was this? <laughs> oh. This was, uh, I'll, you know, I'll be honest, this is club level at a local track. Yeah, but you know what? This is making me worse. This is making me more angry because at Seriously? the club level, you're not getting paid. This is not your profession. I mean, you may have been getting paid, but you're I'm still getting paying. paid either way. I don't care. No, no, <laughs> no I mean, but, the no, racer, saying, like, like, whoever's like, being a butt. Like, it's, yeah. you know, it's one of those things. If you can't show up, it proves that you don't care enough about the day. So don't show up in the first place. Yeah, I like that. But what I'm saying is I have seen some of the worst behavior uh, when at the club level, at the club level, uh, at, at an SCCA or a NASA event, uh, you know, where and I have to, to clear the air. I have been a race director at multiple tracks. So this is no one track. Yeah. So just in case anybody is listening. <laughs> but like, like if, if I am paying a million dollars to rent your track, I expect a level of professional service. If I paid $40 and I know that the people up there are working for a sandwich, 
why am I getting angry? One of the things that I've learned through the years of doing all of the jobs that I've done, because I, I think you guys have read, I've been a crew chief on teams. I've done literally every job in motorsports at this point. The races that are free are the races that I have the most complaints at from the driver's side. And it's, it's almost one of those things that if you put a price on it, people take it a little bit more seriously. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like they're actually going to show up on time if it costs them $1,000. Yeah, and that's ultimately what it comes down to. Um, the, the biggest issues we've ever had at race days are the ones that are literally for charity. <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed by my sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let, let's let's talk about some uh, you know obviously we're going to hide names and things and not say those specific items but ha have you ever seen anything that troubled you so much that you worried about the safety of the competitors like i mean obviously there's annoying and then there's holy cow what you just did endangered yourself and others if you're gonna be if you're gonna be responsible for the fire bottle make sure you pull the pin <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a great safety tip. Yeah, <laughs> and sometimes yeah. you forget. But yeah, or sometimes you lose the pin because you pulled it out. And you don't remember if you pulled it out on the months ago. Or <laughs> three, three events ago, you lost the pin. And that's you know, the problem. Yeah. Tie pin it to your string. finger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pin on the string. string. Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah. No, there no, but I, I, I've definitely seen like some of the stupidest things that are endangering people. That I'm just like, you know, like. Um, you know, speeding in the pits and speeding in the paddock and it is something that if you're in a race car and your adrenaline is up and you get yelled at and you put your tail between your legs and you try and fix yourself is one thing. But when you're like a bat out of hell in your street car, not for no reason, in, for no reason whatsoever, other than you don't understand that there are other people yeah. in the paddock. So it's funny because I've kind of narrowed this down to a litmus test that I do uh, in public is the shopping cart test. If you don't put your shopping cart back, it kind of determines what kind of person you are. <laughs> that, is that, a, on that, that is a dating site. Accurate, <laughs> it's an accurate philosophy. It is an absolute accurate and true philosophy. But instead of a shopping cart, let's talk about a trailer that's not attached to a truck that I don't have a key for. <laughs> yes absolutely that's in the middle of the paddock and i've got a school the next day that i got to set up for and, and you're currently working at uh at uh, atlanta motorsports right no uh that was former former uh, okay still still doing some things with them contract wise but uh most of the stuff that i do is uh third party through my own company track nine uh that's tyler tyler hoffman is a is my business partner there as well but yeah, we yeah. basically we come in and if what are, stuff what are needs your, to be what fixed, your, we fix it. But you, you yeah. can fill the tracks? paddock. What your home tracks. What's that? Your, your, your home tracks. I mean, you're, you're based out of Atlanta, but where are the tracks you're spending most of your time at these days? Spending most of my time at Atlanta Sports Park and Road Atlanta. Um, hey, Road Atlanta, the, 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 the inner paddock at Road Atlanta. There's one way in, there's one way out. And if you, if you get a crowded track day and they're not following the traffic rules, holy crap, it becomes Don't go down the uphill, please. Oh, <laughs> I'm with you, man. I I'm know totally it's shorter. You. I know it's quicker. I know you're in a hurry. Go the long way like everybody else. Or otherwise, we're going to have to put tape on the floor like we're having to do in the grocery stores. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Uh, so, so we, we usually try and try and do mostly tips around here, tips and tricks. <laughs> There's for, one <laughs> for new, for new people. Uh, you know, um, I love the idea of it's just about following the directions and the amount of people who didn't read the packet that was sent home that think that what they're doing is more important. Like you said, than not returning the shopping cart and another, and, and, and just, not remembering that we're at a track and we're trying to have a good time. Okay. So I'm going to go on that last point that you just put up because we pride ourselves on the fact that motorsports is a mentally taxing sport. Correct. Yes. Fact. If you are forgetful and you forget to do something at the track, take up knitting. 
<laughs> you know, that's, that's hard to do too. That's <laughs> you gotta count. Yeah, you gotta keep counting. Hey, I'm just yeah, learning. He... I'm just learning how to I'm tra- learning how to crochet. It, it's it's one of those things. If you don't remember what you're doing at the track, why are you there? Uh, or hire somebody. I know scary words hiring somebody for motorsports, but sometimes things things cost money. Well, and even not hiring, but we've talked about track organization and team organization. Bringing in help. Bringing in an intern. Absolutely. Having a job for everyone that everyone understands what their job is. Delegating. And having lists Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. delegating to people and making sure people understand what it is that they're doing. Because if Fred didn't know that he was supposed to put the hauler away and move the trailer to the lower Mm -hmm. lot, Trust me, we've all been there. I mean, we, we showed up at a professional race weekend with a U-Haul open trailer. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a rule in a rule book now that exists because of us. Um, but it's always good. It means you're doing something right. <laughs> it means you're yeah. doing something, that, mm, you're doing something right. Yeah, um, we've, got, we've got a rule named after us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, Maybe too. If, if, but that's the thing. If you're bringing friends to the track, give them something to do. They'll help you out. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great Absolutely. idea. I love, uh, um, and, and I, I did slip out while you guys are going through this thing here. I love the, uh, the over communicate, you know, um, but you came down to the uh, used uh, and if I'm stealing your thunder, I apologize. Use plywood under jack stamps. I did the uh, 25 hours of thunder Hill and I'm not going to lie. I've, I've been screwing around with this nonsense for a while and at thunder Hill, because it was a NASA sanctioned race. That was a 10 minute penalty. If they caught your car on jack stands without plywood underneath it, because in, in maybe if you're racing up in the Northeast, you don't realize that this, but when pavement, especially asphalt, spends a lot of time in the sun, a jack stand will sink right into it and cut through it. It's very damaging. There's I have those marks of, in my driveway. There's a couple of paddocks that I know that I actually had to repave because of too many holes in the asphalt. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, we didn't go completely through the list but jumping on the plywood under jack stands uh if you ever go race and they paddock you in the grass you'll learn that very quickly (laughs) you need to use plywood i have unless it hasn't rained in new jersey for about (laughs) it's fine three weeks and then you're okay i i I have aluminum squares in my in my trailer it's just i you don't learn that until a certain year in motorsports i don't think Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm yeah so this is great. Um, what about like, because uh, I know that you've done more than just track management and team management. You know, is, is there is there any way that you can spot a butthead before the weekend even starts? <laughs> like, yeah. like is there is oh, there an yes. email that just immediately says, oh, you this could guy's hear the bullet loading into this or loading the, question. I, I got, actually heard the rack on that. I one. got two. Uh, the first one is if you reply to my personal cell phone instead of emailing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. You will deal with it on the day. The second one is if you show up at the track and I can visually see that you're in something that shouldn't be towing a trailer without a load bearing hitch. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You probably haven't done that before. Ju- judgment by trailer safety. I, it's an interesting thought. Um, you should meet these guys that uh, load a car <laughs> Not saying I haven't over. done it. <laughs> we, 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 we have some quote friends that load a car onto the open trailer and then oh, yeah, on <laughs> a set of then on a set of ramps that put it into the back of a box trailer a so, box truck it funny is you say that is to watch from a very safe distance <laughs> funny you say that i won't mention the team name but i will mention the car type uh 2012 grand am a team showed up with a c-class mercedes four-door in a rider truck and they pulled it out by using a tow truck flatbed up to the rider truck and then ramped it off the tow truck. <laughs> at a pro, actually, at a pro weekend. We watch. Yeah, say, safer, safer than what we watch. <laughs> when, when you have to move the ramps. This is a pro weekend, the, though. This is where true. people paid money to go do this. Lots of money, Wait, lots of what, zeros. What do people say when they're like, everybody else is standing around watching that and they're all just like. Oh, we were taking photos. What? <laughs> Oh, gosh. 
Wow. Unless going that, to the gram, bro. I'm uh, not unless, getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> unless that story started with, so we were on the way here in our real trailer <laughs> when the it moose broke. came out. That no. <laughs> this was not one of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I, I, I this I was love, a car with no stickers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh. uh, it happens. I love the idea of of like not. I don't want to say being judged because that sounds like we're judgmental. Although we are judgmental. We're elitist. Yeah, all of us. We're elitist jerks. Yeah, that, you know, it, it's like it's like a salesman. Everybody you know? in motorsports. Yeah, I, I was. I I, I spent. We a all summer. hate each other, but we all love each other. At the end of the day, <laughs> I spent a summer in retail sales, and you know, like people would be like, "Oh, you look at their shoes, and if their shoes are crappy, you know they ain't got money." And they'd be like, "Oh, well, if you you know if they look like this kind of person, insert your least favorite race, or you know they have this many vowels in their." name and this kind of asian versus that kind of asian you try not to sell them a tv jeff because they're going to be horrible man i sold so many tvs that way so i i try not to be judgmental but sometimes you can see a jerk off from 80 feet there was you know going on that same topic i got one more for you um there was a car with known issues that showed up at a very cold rainy race day and this is a car that probably needed a test day beforehand that they showed up and they wanted to race um kitty litter is not expensive or not inexpensive it is expensive uh and at the end of the day if i have to send you a 1200 dollars bill for kitty litter for two <laughs> miles worth of pavement i will Dude, that's a lot of kitty litter a lot that's of kitty the litter. whole track <laughs> yeah. yeah well and oiling down the track is not on only- a rainy day <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that's not only inconsiderate to the track, that's also inconsiderate and dangerous to the rest of the racers. Not only that, you got to change the entire race day schedule. Yeah. At yeah. that point. Now everybody's late. Yeah. And I'll still start on, on time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my absence, did we cover the thank in the corner workers? Like, uh, I, I, Please do that. Chris, no, tell, yeah. Chris, tell Trevor what we do and then see what his take is on that. Well, Lemons has a, you know, the history of bribing the judges and things. We, we <laughs> said, we don't need to do that. We like the judges. We give them breakfast anyway, just because we're friendly with them. So we said, that who needs a bribe? It's the corner workers. They need the bribe. They're the ones sitting out there in the little shed with, you know, the cold or the hot sun, whatever it is. Shed, <laughs> if they're lucky, shed. If they're lucky, right. it has a roof, Or a right? little seat. Yeah. So they're just sitting on a wall. Anyway, An iron so, chair. Right. <laughs> So we uh, we make them a you get a paper lunch bag and we put in some homemade fresh baked goods from Chrissy's mom and a bottle of water and some flavor packets to put in water and like a chapstick and a piece of fruit gummy bears and gummy and... bears like whatever else we could find it's uh, if it's a cold race we put in hand warmers um, occasionally they have for rectal use only stickers on them but <laughs> that always goes well speaking of track workers there's one in your yeah. background yes they are yeah, yeah. 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 yes so that's We're trying to get him wheel, off trace wheel came that's actually chris in that background <laughs> the wheel came off at uh at a high speed at the straightaway the main straightaway at well, it's, NCM. It's, uh, yeah it's this the chicane right after. at the end of the straight at the pit straight on ncm fortunately is as i was turning left the left <laughs> rear wheel or the left rear wheel popped off so <laughs> i love i love the paper bag idea i would recommend putting your car number on the outside of it oh, oh, we, oh we do we write on it and say thanks for working from three pedal mafia cars 41 42 43 and 71 all of them uh-huh <laughs> all, of them. <laughs> all of our cars anyway at CMP, I have delivered this grocery bag, or the, the we have a wagon with all the little bags in there, and the corner is like, oh, yay, we were hoping you'd be here this year. Don't worry. You'll never see a black flag. <laughs> That's awesome. And it, yeah. it, it may have helped us a little. We do, like, it's Every once the in a while. Day, we do get some extra waves, I think. Like, you'll see, you know, the people, <laughs> they're, they're waving to the other people, and they, we wave at them, and they see us at the car number, and they go like, yes. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's, but even, is, okay, what? so going away from where that argument could go, that I'm not even going to mention, <laughs> the, the good side of it, it is it means you guys have been to the track before. It means you, you are experienced. It means you know to oh, look sure. out for the corner workers. That is the point oh. of that. No, totally. Yeah, and the we reason appreciate that, them. 
Yeah. And we still get black flags. Don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, still, I mean, it's when we do something it's really stupid. That's absolutely. my job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but, so if you're going to do the paper bags, make sure there's one going to the race director as well. There you go. Yeah, oh, there you we, go. we usually do send them up to timing and scoring and, 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 the, and the safety trucks. We give cookies oh. to the same every time. Oh, the, this is every my story. Tr- sorry. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> skipped over Chrissy. Go Chrissy. Right? Wait, wait, wait. Right. <laughs> Check it. Check it. <laughs> Hope you have it. So, uh, so my, my mom makes, oh, uh, how many baked containers of baked goods? Probably Hundreds. six or seven containers of baked goods, all different kinds. Uh, we eat half of them. And then I usually make plates for all the race directors and, and everybody who's um, sitting around trying to r- run the race. I uh, give that to them. But the one time uh, pit race, we had one of our cars broke down a whole lot. It would do a lap and a half, I think. And then it would die. So yeah, we were... Sort of problem on test. <laughs> sure, but we kept going. We kept doing it, and it happened. What four, five, six, or seven times that day? Yeah. Sure, it happened or a lot. Four times. Mm, I think. It, hey, and, 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 helpful tip, everyone. If your muffler has a giant hole in it that points right at your fuel pressure, pump, probably not legal either. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> the issue. There's that, but yes, it kept boiling the fuel and or whatever was boiling, and it kept dying. So anyway, um, so every time they came by, not every time, but at least after they started coming by, about third, the third time, time yeah. yeah, I made them a bag of cookies, and uh, I just like I just put it together. I always have baggies and, and just try to give it to them because we appreciate them for us, our stupidity. We appreciate what they do and they had to regardless, but I was trying to make their nice day a little bit nicer. And the next day when uh, some idiot uh, drove a uh, welded rear axle through a flowing water and put that car 16 feet into the mud, they knew us as the cookie car. So they were actually happy. <laughs> Good. They were happy Fine. to come get me Ooh, at that point. Okay, so <laughs> here's an interesting point to jump in from the track management side too, is if you guys know that the car has issues and you believe that you have fixed them, most of the time, it goes to one of my points that I had on the, the document, over communicate, tell the track, you would be surprised i think at the amount of track workers that will be willing to let you out on track during the lunch hour as long as it's not quiet time if you mm. need like a, a, a five minute shakedown yeah seriously this was in I, the middle of the race though so i don't well that's like, different yeah. i mean this was not we, we don't have lunch breaks no that I, was, I understand that yeah not testing on anything. a test day or a track day or an hbd or not an hbd whatever uh, yeah. no that's valid there that's was actually, a, yeah, um, yeah. uh it, it, it again going back to i C- think you guys would be surprised at the amount yeah. of people that are willing to help you uh at cmp uh one of another one of our teammates their big thing is they have big green not eggs guys, and they're huge yeah. They're huge barbecue. One of the guys was a competitive barbecuer for a while. Kurt, who has the best butt in the entire world. Kurt makes it a point uh, every time they go down there to feed the track workers first. They do this great big huge barbecue and all the track workers come. And that's great because the every guy and girl with white pants gets to eat first. Gets to eat first. And then they intermingle with the drivers and you kind of develop that communication. But uh, one of the teams that uh, helps provide some of the side dishes on that, they had an electric car. And CMP has a Jesus hour on Sunday. And the track workers let the electric car out for Jesus hour because it didn't make any noise. And all of, it, all of their laps got to count because they weren't breaking the rules. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, now let's be That's serious. That's a good loophole. The jet ele- <laughs> it was a Jet Electrica, which is a... Horrible. Chrysler. Like, co- 80, it's an 81 like, Chrysler, Chrysler 024. Omni. Had, Om- yeah. yeah, I don't know. what. Yeah, but it wasn't Omni. It was like it was, the It was Conquest? the sporty Omni. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good loophole, and it's going to bring me to another topic on this. Read the damn rule book. Yeah. We use Chris for that. That's Chris's job. Is yeah. Chris. <laughs> Chris reads the rule book and tells us what we can and can't do. He's so, the smart one. So Read I, the rule book. I, what, what I think I'm hearing here is a general topic, and, and you know maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but it's, it's treat the people who run the event and who run the track as, as humans? actual humans <laughs> and not like your, uh, your, your children <laughs> that you have to hide information from, that you have to – they're not your enemies. They're not your children. 
They're You'd not be surprised too if you come to us with information that you think is new to us. Yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, we, aware. Yeah, we figured that out. We saw you using a forklift to unload your car. It's uh, it's cool. Thanks for talking. Hi, to we're new here. <laughs> really, Skip. And don't try to hide phones in the passenger seat. I know you've got passengers, but mount a camera. Mount oh, a proper camera. Don't try to sit there with a phone like this, taking taking video from the back of from the passenger seat. We who see the hell it. wants to watch that anyway? It's <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. Still. Every time I've every time I've been uh, left seating and you know driving, taking somebody on hot laps, they pull out the camera and I look at them and go, "If I do my job, you're not going to be holding on to that phone by the end of this lap, right? or it's going to hit you're me." Not racing, head. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or get under your pedals and and piss you off. Yeah. So so let's let's talk about some future stuff because th this is great, like historical understanding of how tracks work and how events work, but. Man, the, the future does not look bright. Um, it does not look like it might be as fun as it was in the past. You know, we're all looking at physical distancing rules, social distancing, whatever you want to say. The COVID world is upon us. You've already started opening down there. What, what, what do you think the, uh, the future of the paddock and the future of the events look like? We already talked about uh, online drivers meetings before the event even started. Are these good things? Are these bad things? Are these things that we're going to figure out? Or are we like heading to a cyclone of misinformation? Okay, so full speculation mode. Of course. We are not lawyers. We are not in charge of, <laughs> we are not owners of anything. <laughs> we are not medical. We are guessing. We let's definitely didn't out, stay at a hotel get last night. That out of the, <laughs> that's right. Let's get that out of the way. Um, Georgia's open. Uh, so there was an event at Road Atlanta. There's been a couple events at Atlanta Motorsports Park. I know Florida is completely like whatever at this point. Um, we, that usually describes Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Florida man. <laughs> Gentleman Dave left Florida. That should tell us everything we need to know about Florida. What was interesting is we recently may or may not have done a day at VIR. And, and Virginia was... is not open, <laughs> generally. Correct. Uh, but North Carolina <laughs> is. Um, so the event was pretty standard. Everybody kept their distance, but everybody had a garage, so they had a space. George is a little different where it doesn't really matter where you park as long as you're wearing a mask. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's a scarf or an actual medical mask. Um, but from the Virginia trip, I went north to deliver the car back to where it goes and then came back south. And as soon as I traveled north of Virginia, uh, nobody on the road, no traffic, everything closed, completely shut down. You guys know that. At least yeah, it's where we live. Jersey. As soon as I got back at least uh, maybe 100 miles, 200 miles from Charlotte, Richmond area, uh, traffic, everything's open. Today, I sat in traffic on the way to work because we're open. Because you so, live in Atlanta. That did, right. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Easy, easy. <laughs> <laughs> no you guys, traffic, You guys have no! bad traffic in Vegas as well, so don't even. No, sorry, no. <laughs> and you know I'm from Atlanta. It, it doesn't compare. Atlanta um, owns traffic like no one else. Atlanta is number three on the list. Thank you. <laughs> uh, compared to? Hey, have you finished third in anything? <laughs> I like that you're still playing. That's awesome. <laughs> He's trying to get a cover all. <laughs> no, I, um, so we, we talked about a potential event that might have low car counts and we could probably expect that in the future. Low car counts is probably the key to social distancing. You can't get a, a 150 teams at a track with five and eight people at a major event, but you might be able to get 50 teams. I'll tell you where it's going to go. This is not being speculative. This is where I think 100% opinion, but uh, our local dirt track is allowing races to continue. No spectators for now, but you can only have four crew members and one driver. Limited crew. That's, I mean, NASCAR is doing limited crew. And I think that's where we're headed. Uh, I'm not going to point fingers at any one series, but I think for a while there's been probably an influx in crew members. 
Um, so this could be an opportunity for them to fix some of that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, we, you know, we're lemons racers. We've done AER, we've done uh, NASA, we've done SCCA and, you know, a lemons paddock is huge. It's stuffed with people and there are no limits. Any, any fool that shows up with, you know, gate money can get in. And that might be might might be one of the keys to social distancing. Well, if you want to go dirt track racing, you get paid when you leave, so that's nice. Um, <laughs> we're racing. We're racing in a week in Ohio with AER, and we are literally running a skeleton crew. It's me and the other two drivers and our crew. That's it. Yeah, it's not a bad plan. What about you guys, uh, you guys staying at the track, or are you staying off track? Because uh, Mid Ohio is kind of the middle of nowhere. Uh, not Mid Ohio, Nelson Ledges. We are oh, planning on currently. I haven't Absolutely booked isn't it yet. Nowhere. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna correct you on this show just to <laughs> just to annoy one person. Wait, 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 Nelson. wait, wait. Uh, mental, shut up. Bingo. Right. <laughs> but we pronounce Nelson Ledges as Nelson's Ledges. Nelson's Ledges. We do we do that for one person, and he's twitching right now. Because, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean no, I I stay planning on. Planning on Airbnb or hotel. If we do a hotel, it's obviously yeah, uh, eight or twelve people in an RV is the norm at a lot of different <laughs> race tracks. Uh, might not be the best way to go in COVID groups time. Of ten, right? Yeah, of, that's true. There's only nine of them. That's um, great. Uh, what about uh, right seat instruction? How do, how do you feel about that in the future? So that's that's an interesting topic because since February things have changed quite a bit as we've seen most of the HBDEs are going to a lead follow format and i believe ross bentley who's a guest on your show or has been in the past is talking sure, about we'll that right that. now <laughs> <laughs> um he recently did a a webinar on lead follow because nobody outside of the schools have really done it yeah. and it's interesting because there is a right way to do lead follow and there is a wrong way to do lead follow. And I think being speculative in the near future, we're going to see a lot of wrong ways to do lead follow. Mm. Hmm. Probably even wrong is, is less dangerous than wrong right seat. Cause we've been talking about some of the, the dangers in right seat. I would agree um, with that. Yeah. So at least lead follow gets another car around you. So when you screw up or when you, uh, you know, advance the person who's not advanced or don't give the right instructions. One of the manufacturers that I work with, we pretty much only do right seating for what we do uh, at the facility. And we are now moving to solely lead follow. Interesting. I uh, it's a bit more difficult from a logistics standpoint. You'd think it's a lot like more. Got, this, it's a lot more difficult yeah. because you have to use double the double the resources. Double the cars. Yeah, I mean, you have to basically have a dedicated instructor car for the day. Yeah, and if it's if it's a facility, I think that it is. You know, you're you're chewing up a lot of real estate too. That's a that is a uh, real estate wise. That's a small tr smaller uh, demonstration area. And now you're now you're doubling the cars. That's a well. I, and you've got to get cars that are I don't know fast what you're talking about. Keep up with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know totally. I mean, it, your great instructors who all drive Miatas, it's going to change. Are, are going to have trouble instructing those mid-level guys who have GT3s. So, and that's the thing that we've seen. Not we, I have the seen industry, in the past. Yeah. It's it's what I've seen in the past is a lot of these guys can get into a car and right seat effectively because they can see what what is happening um now we're going to a full observation mode from outside the car with a radio yeah. or or and yeah i did that at grid life yeah. and or not a radio at yeah. some of these other events that i'm doing yeah. so now it's become one of these things you have to be completely the way i'm describing it at the moment is coaching should be at that point second nature you have to be so much more aware you have to know what is happening. You have to know how to fix it before it happens. Hmm. Intriguing. Yeah. And the, hmm. the coaching and the instructing portion of it, you shouldn't have to think about what you're going to say next. You shouldn't have to revert back to the script. It should be up here because you've done it for years. 
And that's kind of the, the territory that we're headed towards now where I think the guys that had a lot of work before all of this are going to be overbooked. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, it makes sense. You're, coach, you're coaches that can live in that mindset and that can coach from any medium. Yeah. The, you, you talked about being able to spot the D-bags as a race director. And I, I think you're going to start seeing a lot of culling of the herd of anyone who's done three track days is suddenly a driving coach. And those people are going to have to get out. And we're for people that are capable of doing it from a radio, from a camera, from – uh, uh, observation point in the uh, track worker station. Well, and you know, I, I, I know we're changing topics here for a second, but I do want to mention it there. We've seen a massive influx on iRacing and it's gone up from, I think 4,000 people is the most I've ever seen before COVID. Mm -hmm. And now we're at 16 to 20,000 people online at one time. Yeah. Every, every idiot with an internet connection is getting an iRacing rake. Well, I'm right here, more. Jeff. I'm right here. I'm, I'm pointing. Lie. Look, when, we, when, we I, when I point you. one finger at you, there's three coming back at me, baby. We know about you, mental. You're in the. <laughs> we're 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 actually looking right now at starting a series because there is some interest in doing so with a mix of pro and amateur racers, but it they must prove that they have real world wheel-to-wheel -wheel experience with either a license or in-car video and we'll put them in the same room but you must prove that hmm. interesting yeah because it means that you've at least taken it seriously yeah 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 i, I like i like this I, I think these are great discussions that no we, nobody knows how it's going to play out nobody knows it, it, it is highly probable that he, two years from now we're like going hey remember covid <laughs> i remember we didn't race for six months remember they said it was going to change things wearing a mask laughing at the track yeah, i mean or <laughs> two, two years from now we might be rubbing our arm going maybe we get to go outside and play now that i have my shot i don't know Ethel's hoping. Not that kind. Sign <laughs> <laughs> <Hide> me up. <laughs> oh. Let's make sure. Yeah, Tre Trevor, this has been awesome. Uh, is there anything you want to push? Pimp your social media, your your business, anything you want to do. Sounds like you're busy as uh, as, as all get out at the moment. No, one armed already, man in a wallpaper I contest. Click that one on bingo. So I have <laughs> <laughs> So you are you are the first guest to ever get bingo during the show. It's very exciting. It's I awesome. almost got a cover all. Um, <laughs> oh, we're not done yet. <laughs> so personal personal social media, my Instagram is T Andrusco, T A N D R U S K O. Um we are not really focused on social media at the moment because we're focused on clients. So we'll begin to s start sharing more stuff on social, but you can, you can find us on Instagram as King Kingpin race services. Uh, I drive for a team called SJS motorsports. We're on there as SJS motorsports. And then I have to shout out my sponsor, SimCraft uh, at SimCraft on Instagram. You can find them on Facebook. If you don't know who they are, they make motion simulators for racing and, uh, flying games basically and wow. simulators and it sounds like you have some extra production next week so if somebody's desperate for a setup no i won't be there <laughs> <laughs> i'll be out of town <laughs> hopefully well, well we, we hopefully wish you luck in your uh you, you register as uh, car 25 at uh nelson's ledges uh 308 <laughs> Well, I meant like your, your card num num number, like the oh, car number. There was twenty four, and now you're twenty five. If I remember the the PayPal number, that's called that's called a callback. <laughs> uh, we're gonna move on. <laughs> Stick with us. It's now time to talk safety. Oh, oh that's oh. exciting! Oh. <laughs> I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Yeah. Hey, just the tip. Just the tip. I don't know. <laughs> 
before. I have no there idea what that sounds like. Next week, I'm going to be listening back to the show going, the hell did I do? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun noise we don't use. Okay. This time, we're talking chainsaw safety. I'm thinking about what we do. At what we I've been doing a lot of uh, yard work. Oh, I already see my notes getting changed. Um, so we did a lot. We actually just took it, took down a whole bunch of forsythia, like really big trees, and we got the chainsaw out. What? Forsythia, what? Uh, big leafy. So they have yellow bushes. They're bushes, but they have yellow flowers on them for a little while, but they get very strangly and wrinkly. So anyway, before you start, check your controls, ch chain tension, and all the bolts before uh, all adjusted to your manufacturer's specifications. Uh, make sure you clean all your dirt and debris away. Start with saw on the ground or another fern surface away from people and other stuff. And make sure that you uh, use the right container to fuel it and don't smoke when you're doing it. All these are seem pretty obvious, but you never know. Uh, and once you are, um, oh, good, I like that ad. Um, when, as you're using it, uh, make sure you keep your hands on saw handle and keep your secure footing. Um, and the biggest one of all, of course, as a safety squirrel, PPE is super important. Make sure you have safety, safety glasses, which are not just necessarily sunglasses. They're actual safety glasses so they don't um, break if something shoots at you. Uh, make sure you have good shoes on. I would say safety shoes, but there's plenty of them that are not steel-toed that are fine. Hearing protection is probably a good idea. Maybe a face shield. Uh, stuff is usually flying everywhere, so whatever you can do to stop it. And, um, and my, somebody had the suggestion of wearing chaps too, except we did not do that. I don't know your own chaps, but that's fine. Um, they so don't have assless chaps. I do they make they if they're specific chap, chaps, yes. and they make different ones for electric saws versus gas saws. So what they do is not necessarily just like a protected. It's got like strings in it that when the blade nicks it, it like sucks the strings into the the chain and stalls the stalls saw. The saw yeah. But the electric has different torque properties, so it keeps going. So it has to have a different kind of thing. So make sure you have the right chaps for the metal. Current. You wore those to the Mint Four Hundred pre race party, didn't you? Always. Yes, but the, the, they were leather, not the the chainsaw. And I want to point out to Jeff that if they're assless, that's how they're chaps. If they're not assless, they're just pants. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Do they? Mm. Why do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> you do not know that. Do they make chainsaw pants? He spent a lot of time at Fremont Street. They do. They do make right? chainsaw pants. I, 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 I the wrong I end of Fremont pants, Street. But I know, I know Jeff knows if they're badger resistant pants or not. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they badger resistance got to be okay. Anyway, don't wear loose cl fitting clothing. Clothing. Watch for branches that are going to be under tension, and if you cut them, and they will fly back at you. And be cautious of your saw kickback. So if you're using chainsaw. Be careful. Yes, chainsaw man, please. With your saw, well, I've used the saw a lot. So with your saw kickback, think about it as you're holding your positioning too. If this kicks, where is it going to go? And you want it to go in a direction that's not your face or a other body part. Like have it in a spot where if your kick is going to go away from you, out to the side, over your shoulder, something like that. And when you're using the saw, try to keep all the work you're cutting as close to the body of the saw as possible because then it doesn't have the leverage to kick back. It's when you're using the tip that it can really get you catch something and give a kick. And that's got a lot of leverage on you too. So. Branches under tension <coughs> is something that I didn't understand because the only time I had ever really done a chainsaw was chainsawing things that were felled purposely. But if a tree falls and is still a it? full live tree and has every branch and every everything, the physics that goes into a violently falling tree is, is tremendously different than, hey, saw this. Mm -hmm. The amount of branches and how it stands and how it's going to move when you cut that branch. Watch out for that. This is, this is valid springtime stuff. A lot of people, like, if you don't live in Vegas, you're out in your yard, you're getting that uh, underbrush cleared out, you got thunderstorms coming this is this is pay attention this is good stuff awesome tyler or trevor i said tyler sorry about that trevor. easy <laughs> <laughs> i mean <whoops>. rude <laughs> <laughs> let me let me just turn off my video i was, uh, I, was, <laughs> I, was I was gonna say uh you, so you're below the manson nixon line how big mason is all like? <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of what kind of pooling you got yeah, I've got a lawnmower that doesn't work. Like, 
<laughs> now we're BFF, funny. yeah, best, best friends forever. <laughs> a brand new lawnmower that's a year a year younger than I am. No, wait, I, um, it's a year old. <laughs> I have and killed more two-stroke motors than Mangala. <laughs> Feel free to come fix my lawnmower. I'm you don't want that, you. no. <laughs> well, thank you, Trevor. Tyler, whatever your name is, <laughs> whatever. Hey, Tre- All right, so uh, yeah, Trevor's a, Trevor's a buddy of mine, and uh, yeah, Trevor, thank you. Uh, he reached out and said, "I really do want to be on the show, and I'm glad you did, and I'm glad we had you on here." Thank you. I absolutely. Am too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. For being here. And the showing the other side of the track management is actually really important to us uh, because we've been on both sides. We've volunteered at events. We've never done management, but you know. The reason we know how to take care of the corner workers is we've been corner workers. I don't recommend track management. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Trevor Tyler. Th- for Thank you all for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We hope you enjoyed getting bingo 27 times. Did you get the cover <laughs> all? What are you missing? I'll make sure to get it in. That's you, Trevor. What, what, Trevor, you did you did you miss all? anything? What did you miss for your cover for your bingo, your coverall? He's looking at his shirt. Hi to Chrissy's mom. Got it. Somebody flap. Oh, oh no! <laughs> no, 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 no! Flaps <laughs> is your friendly local auto parts store. Friendly, friendly. That's <laughs> not what it stands for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, and none friendly. of us can go to the auto parts store because we're all on convocation. <laughs> well, metal, metal. What have you come in third and something for? <laughs> no Lots one's racing, things. so no nothing. one's racing. No cover all this Who's week. We got a Citroen. We do. We do. It's for sale. Would you, would you, you like, to like buy it? it? Would you want it? Do you want it? It's got a roll cage. Tube of mockery. Set it. Somebody. <laughs> Hang on. It's coming. It's coming. Chris is reaching. We're going to run out of music, but that's okay. That's right, what did you come in <laughs> third than metal? <laughs> that's what metal oh, sounds God. like when he doesn't have his microphone turned on. Yeah, basically. Awesome. Somebody, somebody needs to puke. And we, uh, again, we nobody's that. racing. That only happens when people are racing. That's yeah. That's all Bruce, man. Yeah. Or me in a sim yeah. racing, doing a figure eight with too many crashes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trevor, you need uh, when you're done with the USAC, get into our Monday night uh, events. With, uh, oh, we're done now. All right. Awesome. Monday, Monday 9 p.m. Uh, the four-letter code is ah, the best breaks ever. Uh, we Probably hope you enjoyed. We hope you enjoy. Yes, also on your bingo card. We hope you not maybe his. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes, give us a five star rating. Even if you hate us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com find us on instagram or twitter or show up in iRacing for the monday night spectacular 9 p.m eastern time email us contact us on the social media to get the code thanks again and until next week keep the shiny side up unless you're just in iRacing then really it's all the same amount of shininess no matter what side it's on just keep them wheels down